Okay, this is the follow-up video for charging those nickel metal hydride batteries of my neighbor's Honda Civic Hybrid. Um, I wanted to show the build of the uh, of the rig. So again, what we were using is just a conventional uh, two to ten amp, um, twelve volt battery charger for an automotive battery. This is a cheap one from Harbor Freight Tools. I entered a couple of sockets and I added a, a voltmeter on top, just you, that's not necessary to do so. Then you want to use an existing battery that you have sitting around, as large as possible, that has a good capacity. This is a mid-size uh, marine battery, but any automotive battery would work. And um, that way the, the battery will act as a buffer to charge your nickel metal hydride batteries and uh, it can be in turn being charged by the charger but the battery will act as a buffer so the first thing to do is hook that up okay so now we've got a voltage going and it's going to maintain a trickle charge once it's charged up and it'll also charge as necessary okay on to the rig Maybe I'll back up a little bit on it here so we can see it a little better. Now I just used whatever materials I had, and I did not have a thick piece of plywood, just this Luan. That's why I bolstered it with 2x4s underneath, but it turned out to be a, a good thing anyway because that gave me extra space to wire things through and add resistors and things like that. Uh, but you're going to want a sheet of plywood about 18 inches by 30 inches longer than this one. This one's only 28 inches, so I didn't have room to put a stop on the far side. So go maybe 18 by 30 and you'll have a, a, a large enough uh, a large enough unit. Now what I did here was I created a, uh, a stop on the end and you can see this is just made out of um, thin Luan plywood, but try to get some thicker plywood if you have some. Um, then I made a, a box underneath. It doesn't matter what size the uh, the two by fours are. You could use two by twos or one by twos or something like that, just to give yourself a little bit of space so you can wire things through. Then I just happen to have this three eighth uh, inch uh, uh, trim, but you could just rip a couple of pieces of plywood that were three eighths inch thick and lay out a strip at 90 degrees and tack it down and then butt up the lip of your um, battery right here right against it this right here and then you'll do the same thing for your other strip on the other side you'll run it at 90 degrees and have it so there's just enough space in there that uh, they're not jammed you can easily slip them in so maybe just like a 30 second of an inch and run them parallel and then tack them all tack them both down so you have something that will hold them hold the uh, the uh, the sticks in register and get them just into the right spot then for the resistors and i originally had uh, 15 ohm resistors and then i piggybacked some 10 or 15 ohm ones to get a better charge. Really not necessary. You, if you want a milder charge with maybe 600 milliamps, you could stick with 15 ohm ones. These were 13 watts. These are 10 watts. You want at least 10 watts. They do get hot. Um, you could have a box fan here to help cool them down. I ended up recommending 10 ohm resistors at 15 watts capacity. Um, and that seems to, that, that should uh, be more than enough power. And I would still put a uh, either a muffin fan that you put on here. You could cl enclose this whole thing, then put a fan on the end to draw some heat out and have the open end on the other side. Or just have a box fan sitting in front of it and just have them cool the whole bank down. So uh, what I ended up doing was driving just a little uh, pin through here and then soldering the leads. But I think a better way would be to take, to drill, once you've got these lined up, and these are here, and you've got these, so they're giving a little bit of, of give when they're pressed against here. Draw a line, so they're all going to have enough contact. And then uh, drill, uh, uh, line these all up so you can mark on here where they're going to be when you've lined up all 20 of the, of the battery packs. Then drill a hole for each, a little pilot hole. Put the resistor up through the hole, 
have it come through the contact and then in the same hole screw a little screw into each and then you'll have contact you won't need to solder them in then on this side here on the other side of your um, of your resistor I just took the same lead that was the uh, the uh, cable and uh, I tied it to each one you could solder it or just just to do a mechanical contact on each one and just run them the whole length of the thing so each of the resistors I mean is is uh, attached to your positive lead on the other side now I had recommended instead of getting 40 of these keystone battery contacts that are meant for AAA or AA batteries what I would recommend is that you get the coil types that are good for C or D batteries and I would do the same thing over here except for the lip instead of having doing the same thing on the other side if you're going to stick with these contacts I would recommend having a rail here like a, a strip of copper the entire length and so they're automatically all tied to the negative I kind of laboriously soldered each one with a lead and then had them come down to that negative rail on the other side but I would recommend just having a, a common strip or if you have the C or D battery coils on top of the 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 the, uh, the strip of 3 8 plywood that you have here I would put a block that's maybe a one by one inch block and then I would have each spring attached to that and then I would have a common uh, wire loop around each one at the base of it all the way through and that way you won't have to do an individual one on each but the um, this one turned out pretty well despite the fact that I used these little AAA ones the whole way through they really seem to click into place I would just take the uh, the negative on one side clip it in and then the positive and it just clips right into place now I only have two batteries to play with because the ones from my neighbor are back in the car um, but I got these two cheaply off of eBay just I thought it would be a neat thing to have as a uh, inexpensive uh, jumper for a, a car battery because you're gonna have 14 volts and they have quite a bit of uh, power and I was just going to tie the negative to the positive here and then on the other end have um, you know some jumper leads to make some quick uh, easy jumper so here we have as you know the uh, the square ones are the positive and then the ones that are uh, I think it's hexagons or the uh, negative leads on these things so you put it on here and they'll just click all into position when you have if you were to have those C or D spring ones over here I would press into the coil first push in and then uh, click it on this side here it's the same kind of thing you could just drop these in actually and press them on both sides at once and just click them all in and run all 20 really quickly that way or you can press in on one side or the other first like press on the positive side and click it into the negative side and then you can run them all in a line so let's go ahead and do a test on these what you want to do then is once you've got them all lined up is you will attach the uh, the positive to your positive and your negative lead which is now sitting under here to your negative and let's go take a meter reading too while we're at it okay so here they are now I'm having a quicker charge because I have uh, I have put in the parallel uh, some 10 watt or 15 some of these are 10 and some of these are 15s in parallel with the other one to get a faster charge I would just get a single resistor on each of these instead of uh, putting this little well this is kind of neat to have a slow charge or fast charge just by connecting or disconnecting an alligator clip I would just have a static thing where each one is just 10 ohms 15 watts handling capacity and just be done with it would be the easiest way to do it but on here let's uh, let's get a couple of meter readings all right so let's go to volts and you can see here even though you have these resistors in fact let's take off the auxiliary one and just have the 15 ohm one I mean the third the uh, 13 ohm one there okay if we take a meter reading to this or any of the negative uh, over here you'll see let's go and get a uh, that's AC volts that's not going to help me much is it all right 
can turn this on and see it. All right, so we're getting 13.06 volts, and you say, well, that's too many volts, but these are not very voltage dependent. It's better to have uh, go a little higher than lower on these. It really, you have to be careful with the current on these. You don't want to get them too hot. They can take quite a bit at the start, uh, but then as you get towards the end, you, do, you want them to cool off. You don't want them to be too, too warm. And in fact, the way these are, they'll never get hot with this system that I have here. They, they just have a nice, uh, easy charge. So here you have 13 uh, volts going through here. Of course, this is going to clamp it a little bit because this is a, a, a 7.2 volt battery. So you can see coming through here, there's only 8.15 volts running through here right now. Okay, but now let's go to current. 10 amps. And on your meter, you don't want to do this for too long because it's kind of hard on your meter. All right, let's go here now to see what kind of current is running through here. On these, well, these are charged batteries. It's probably not going to be too much current running through. But let's uh, put the negative lead here on the battery. Temporarily disconnect here and put your lead right to here and you'll see how many amps we've got running through here. Except we don't have the, I don't think this is hooked up. Hold on a second, let's get some contact. Do we have contact? Thing might not have a fuse on it. So maybe I can't do the readings on it. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, this, this meter's not working. So, I go like, wait a minute. I didn't have it on the right setting. Okay, here we go. So here we go. We have um, almost one amp running through here. All right. And running through here, charged battery, we have, there we go, so yeah, we've got the 800 milliamps running through here, which is a pretty good charge. If I were to take this off, now we have only 300, so uh, with the 15 ohm resistor, we have a 350 milliamp charge going through the battery. When I ganged the other one on here, and see these are warming up just a little bit. Then we have an 830 milliamp charge. So that's pretty good. Now, after you've lo um, charged these up for about 12 hours or so, and you want to discharge them all, you'll be able to discharge them at a pretty good rate. I would just take these off and do the discharge at the same rate that you were charging them at and uh, let them discharge for maybe like, uh, well, I would take a, a meter to them and because the voltage is going to start to drop. And once the voltage gets down to a 6 volts, that's where I would stop. So it's not really, it's not really time to, uh, to that. But let's see what we've got here in terms of volts. Let's see here. Okay, we're, see, we're still at 8 volts and it's holding even though it's discharging. So the, let's uh, let's do a load test on these. Okay, now this is a standard uh, cheap Harbor Freight load tester. I took the switch off it because I wanted this to be on all the time. I didn't want to have to hold it, and I wanted a better reading, so I um, took the meter out and I just have some clips so I can go to my own multimeter. But let's take a battery. Let's put the meter to here. Okay, let's take one of these. Let's clamp it. And this does quite a bit of draw. It's a high, uh, it's a high current thing. Okay. Let's see what we've got. All right. So now we're pulling about 30 amps. I put a fan on here to help cool this thing down if it's on for too long. And you can see that these batteries, looks like they were not fully charged. With the 20 amp draw, it's down to 6.65 volts. 
I think on your batteries, a nice thing to do would be to see what they're going to be like after one minute, after uh, three minutes, maybe after five minutes. This thing's putting out a lot of heat. It's like a hair dryer over here. So here it is. We're at 6.53 volts, and it's slowly dropping. Actually, it's pretty holding its own pretty well. But I, um, I would stop when it gets to 6 volts. It's putting out a lot of heat. All right, so there's your your uh, your chargers and the system. Basically, you're going to get these things lined up. I would probably put springs on this side, gang them all together with a single wire instead of running individual ones. On this side over here, I would push your. Um, I'll just take that off. On this side over here, I would drill holes. I would push the resistor up through it. I would. Um, then put a screw through each after you've bent the resistor off to the side, I mean the, uh, the lead off to the side a little bit, put a screw through each to secure it, and then on the other side I would uh, gang them all together using the same lead that you're using for your jumper cable. And then use the same jumper cables to either discharge the battery by clamping them together, and you can charge just one battery, three batteries, 20 batteries all at once, and you can discharge them all at once um, at, and uh, that's pretty much it. So there's your system and uh, the cost of the parts is not too exorbitant. Uh, these are about 30 cents each. The coil types are about 20 cents each. Um, you're already going to have a lead acid battery and a battery charger. The resistors, I priced out uh, the um, the 10 ohm uh, uh, 15 watt ones, they were about a buck a piece. So you'll have maybe 20, 30 bucks worth of resistors. And the whole thing should, uh, should be very reasonable and very easy to do. And once you've got this system, it's so quick to get these things charged and discharged. In fact, once you have your bank of 20 in here, you go ahead and charge them for 20 hours and then just discharge. And then after you finish charging them, immediately take them off the battery, short the thing out. Well, not really shorted because you're controlling the current through these resistors, so you're not never shorting out your battery. Um, discharge it for uh, maybe six hours. Take a reading after six hours, see if you're down to six volts. And um, then give it another charging for maybe another uh, 12, uh, 15, 18 hours. And then do it again, and then do a final charge up, and then put your battery pack back together. These batteries, they were about a quarter volt each. Each stick was about one volt. They were dead as Dillinger. They're the original batteries to a 2005 Civic. So they're very old and um, the car had been sitting for four years. And yet when I bolted it all together, I did strip a bolt putting it together. Be careful when you're putting the battery pack. Don't over tighten those, uh, those bolts. But, um, yeah, I put it back together, and the owner reports that it, uh, the engine, there's no more, uh, uh, there's no more warning lights. It passed the emissions test, and even though it's behaving a little differently than it did when new, I have a feeling it doesn't have quite the capacity that they did originally. Um, it seems to be working fine. So, and it, the car, when she brought it to me, was at the point where the regular lead acid battery wouldn't charge either because the car just, re, you know, the IMA controller refused to charge the batteries in the state that they were in. And since it, you couldn't, and that the car doesn't have an alternator, it has an inverter that runs off the high voltage. So without the high voltage present, without the batteries being charged, the inverter wouldn't work to charge the battery. So now the whole thing seems to be working. And again, if you're in the DC area and you just want to borrow this rig, come on by and get it. Um, I was going to ship it, but, you know, the price of shipping and everything and the, the labor of boxing it up and everything is a, is a bit much. So it's easier to make your own. The, the parts are not that expensive. And the most expensive parts are the ones that you already have, a battery and a, and a, um, and a battery charger. And the rig, is, this rig was just made out of scrap wood. You know, it's just whatever wood I had handy. But again, I would get a thicker piece of plywood. If you don't have a 3 8 strips, I would just uh, take some 3 8 plywood and, and maybe cut something that's maybe like 1 or 2 inches by 3 8 lay one down exactly 90 degrees, put these up against it, 
lay the other 